Hello, this is Pat Harris. Welcome to part four, in my opinion, the most exciting of all this uh, training tutorial of the Final Cut Pro 7 training tutorials. In this section, we will be covering basic effects, color correction, transitions, titles, and keyframing. All right, so let's get started. So you have your final thing in here and you have all your clips down here. You know how to edit, you know what stereo pairs do and everything. Now time for the fun stuff, effects. You can browse uh, the effects in the effects tab in the browser window, or you can select a clip and go up to the top menu and effects. And then you can go through video filters and find what you're looking for. The there's a lot of effects in Final Cut and sometimes they're confusing the way they're laid out and that kind of stuff. Um, video filters is basically, for, as far as effects on a video track, is what you're gonna use. It's blur, border, it kinda goes down the whole list and you can add more, you can add plugins, there's tons of different stuff. Um, let's just, for an example, we'll take stylize and we will go to, let's posturize, see what that looks like. All right, you see what that did? It kind of made it, you know, it looks, it looks funky, but if you're going for that effect, that's, it'll look, it will look how you want it. And now to edit effects, you double click on it. And now this can be confusing because you have to make sure that when you're in the viewer, you're selected on the right clip when editing uh, effects and filters. So you'll see it says MV1159 from sequence one. This is sequence one, this is MV1159. Whereas if we had something selected here, it's not gonna, there's gonna be no filters, but as soon as we double click here, now we have the filters. Now with this, this certain effect, there's different levels you can do and mix, which kinda, you know, we can lessen the effect, I guess a little bit by bringing the mix down. I guess we can't bring the mix down. Yeah, all right, that'll lessen the effect a little bit. And different effects will have um, different options and that kind of stuff. Uh, let's do, let's see. And it can be kind of confusing as to where to, if you're looking for certain uh, effects, but you can use the find function. And you, let's say you want to do a vignette. I know there's a vignette effects here. Let's do a vignette and we'll find all. And there we go, it found it, vignette. Uh, it's kind of primitive, but all right, let's show in browser. Here it is, it's under master, or it's under, see it's bugging out a little bit. It's under video, what is it under? It's under stylized, it's right there, vignette. So we'll bring it in, drop it on, and that's a nice little vignette, but say we wanna edit it a little bit. Let's say we wanna darken it. Yeah, it looks, it's real dark now. We'll bring the size up a little bit, and maybe increase the fall off. All right, that looks nice, it's a nice little vignette there. All right, so now you get the basic of effects there's tons here you should just one day sit down for a few hours and go through them apply them in different clips see what they do um that's probably the easiest way to go through and learn it or watch other tutorials and see what people use and what's useful and that kind of stuff all right so let's just uh disable that for a second and we'll go through briefly briefly through color correction because there could be a whole nother series on color correction using the scopes and waveform monitors and it's it can get very complicated and which is why there are people who are colorists and color people who grade color just as a living just grading color so uh, this is ba real basic um, what I'm going to do we'll add a, a color corrector three way and because I used the uh, CineStyles um, image preset for the Canon 60D, it pulls out all the contrast so you can get the most amount of color information and the most, uh, the best picture from your DSLR. Um, I'm gonna also go to image control and I'm gonna add a contrast filter, which is right here. So, now normally when doing color correction and that kind of stuff, you're gonna wanna use the um, when the there's a whole layout if you go to window arrange for color correction um but i'm not going to go through that because there's a lot of complicated stuff with scopes and waveform monitors that really isn't in for a basic uh tutorial for now you can just kind of do it by and see what looks good um let's just see we're going to increase the contrast you see how it looks much more punchy 
and then we can increase the pivot point, which basically one will make it darker, one will brighter. It depends on where that S curve is, you know, how much contrast and where that middle point is. Uh, I think that looks pretty good right about there. Let's just skim through and make sure. Yeah, that looks, it looks much better. Let's just before, after, definitely. All right, and now the fun part, color correcting. Um, one easy way to do it is if your color correction is off. See, this looks a little bit blue, um, but I think that's just because there's a lot of blue things in the scene because that chair looks pretty white. Um, you can set it, just if you hit this uh, little eyedropper and drop it on something white, that'll set that as your white point. And see, it didn't really do much. But let's say it, the color correction was really off and this was actually white. So now it kind of makes it, it uh, automatically adjusts it. Or you can just do it by eye and try to find the white point. Um, what I like to do is I usually like to add some sort of a, a color look. So let's see, this is like a, a summer type, you know, clip, you know, it's outside, there's a pool, um, tiki torches. Let's just, uh, on the whites, which are the highlights, we'll just bring up, uh, put some orange into it, you know, and maybe we'll brighten up, uh, not that much, just a little bit. And now it's more of a, you know, a summer feel. It's a little bit too bright, I think, actually. A little overexposed. Yeah, that looks nice. It, it, it makes it, you know, feel it's kind of warm, kind of summer-like like thing. Um, we can increase the saturation here, which will make everything kind of very saturated, or we can decrease it and make it black and white. Um, this is just a simple uh, color correction here, just a little orange or a look rather. It's not really color correction because color correction is making it back to what the image should look if you were looking at it with your eyes and not adding colors in. Um, one more quick technique I'm going to show is, let's turn that back on. Um, something I like to do, which is like a, let's take, let's find some of the right footage here. It's this stuff. Yeah, here we go. And we'll do it with this footage. All right. Here's, it's just a, you know, I was testing out a slider. It's just a slide back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to add contrast and we will add, uh, three-way color corrector. All right, now we'll double click on it and we'll go to filters. All right, add some contrast first. That looks pretty nice right there. And now this is already kind of orange because I was inside and I had it balanced to, you know, outside and the lights I used were kind of orange. So that looks all right. But what I'm gonna go through is um, I'm gonna make a quick vintage look. I'm gonna make the blacks very blue, dark blue. And I'm gonna make the whites the opposite, which is orange. This, it looks kind of vintage. It's kind of like a teal and orange type look. It adds a contrast in color. So there's contrast in the actual darkness and brightness, and there's also contrast in the colors because the whites are orange and the darks are blues. And this creates kind of like a nice vintage look, you know, it looks old. So that's just a quick look, you know, there's lots Lots of different looks you can go through. You can learn more about color theory and there's tons of stuff out there. Um, all right, on to the next thing, which is transitions. So let's just bring down another clip. Transitions are pretty self-explanatory. Let's turn snapping on. Uh, you can view them all through the effects tab or up in the toolbar. But one thing you do need to know is that it needs clip real estate in order to use the transition. So if we try to drag this transition into this cut here, it won't because I didn't, using an out point and this is the entire clip. So what you would need to do is drag some off this clip, drag some off that clip. See now it has extra video in between the in and out point to add the transition. See now it'll be there. And that extra video will um, be used to create the transition. And there we go, that's a nice little transition there. And you can browse through all the transitions, there's cross dissolves, there's everything and you can get more transitions and the same thing goes for audio transitions if you close this and you close that you scroll down there's audio transitions and audio filters work the same way also um you just drag them onto the clip let's uh quickly go over titles um titles in final cut are not that great um if you go to the viewer um you can go here 
this little guy. And there's a bunch of different things. There's generators, you can do bars and tone here. Um, you can add just solid colors. Uh, you can add, they have like clouds and stuff. It's not that great, you know, it's, it's just like fractal noise and After Effects if you use that. With, you know, and they have all these options and stuff. Here you can also do text. And the default text in Final Cut is not that great. You pretty much get that, or you can do Boris, uh, Title 3D, but it's very buggy and doesn't work that great. If you're gonna do text, I would suggest either doing it in Photoshop, because if you import a Photoshop file uh, in Final Cut 7, they will come out as layers in your timeline, so that's easy to do, or use After Effects or Motion. But if you need to do something quick, or you want to do a quick you know, lower third, they're, they're not awful for lower thirds. That's basically it. You drag it down, double click on it so you're editing the one on the timeline, not the default one. Go to controls, you can type, you know, lower third. And, and it'll change and you can change the color, the size, and that kind of stuff. It's okay, it's not great. That's text in Final Cut. Let's quickly do keyframing. Keyframing be can become very complicated. Um, I'm also gonna go over a few motion of the motion tab here. Your motion tab here is basically all your, how you can, you can zoom this, you, or let's click, click on the clip first. You can zoom the clip in and out. Uh, you can rotate it. You know, you can crop it, which will basically do that. And you can add a drop shadow if it's, if it's a text layer, and that kind of stuff. You can add motion blur if you're moving it. And the way to move things is by keyframes. So, um, and if for some reason your window does that, like mine does sometimes, where you can't see this little timeline over here, you can just move the edge a little bit and it'll show up. This here is, these are all, these little diamonds are for keyframes. And now what we can do is set a keyframe. So let's set a keyframe. This is the very beginning of the clip. See this white line here? We'll set a keyframe for the scale and the center and the rotation. And we'll go down a few frames and we will just move it and it will automatically add the next keyframe. And, and you can see this line is moving up and down. We'll zoom it in and let's make this, what is it, zero? Yeah, we'll make it zero. And the center point can actually stay. So now what that does is it automatically animates, so animates from this point to that point. So, you know, our scale at this point was an 85, so it was zoomed out and now it's gonna slowly zoom in until it gets to this point, which is a 145. And the same thing with the rotation. Rotation was at negative 27, and it'll just rotate in. I mean, that's a simple, simple explanation of keyframes. You can do it with pretty much everything. You can do it with filters. Uh, let's just drag a filter in here real, real quick. So if you wanted it to get brighter over time, you can just see what I mean by that window there, and it'll, it'll come up. You add a keyframe, that's the brightness, and you can add another one and raise it up a lot and it'll slowly get brighter. And you can keyframe everything pretty much. Um, one of the most useful tools is the pen tool because if you're gonna use keyframes with audio where you have someone talking and it gets quieter and you wanna adjust audio levels, you click P, which is the hotkey for the pen tool. You can go down and add keyframes right on the timeline, right to the audio levels. So now we can have it go lower, and then have it get back louder again. And it's very quick and easy to do, and you just click arrow to go back to your arrow again. And same thing with the opacity levels of video clips. Instead of adding a, um, a fade in, fade out transition, you can just simply go up, to, up there and bam. That's the opacity line, and it goes from 100 to zero, and it'll just slowly fade out. It sometimes is quicker than going up and adding a fade in, fade out transition. So that's the basic of keyframing, very basic of keyframing and effects and color correction and all that. Hopefully the tutorial wasn't too long. Make sure you check out part five of the Final Cut Pro training tutorial where we will cover export settings and options and troubleshooting. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out RTN at rtnch5.tv where you can watch live programming and make sure you check out my site, cinematicdslr.com.